Now let's look at another example. This is an airline revenue management application. There are people that have tickets on a flight and will not show up, and they like to reuse those tickets on a subsequent flight. So there is always an incentive for airlines to overbook a flight. Here, we are looking to understand the range of possible outcomes for total revenue, given that what can happen with no-shows. Let's review the model in Excel. Yet, before reviewing this example, let me walk you through our tool and some of the features that we will be using. Anytime you install one of our products, after installation, the program will be loaded as an add-in in Excel, and you'll see the ribbon appear. As you can see, clicking on the model tab displays or hides the task pane. Simulation model tab allows you to set up simulation models. Here you can click the distribution button to access a range of predefined probability distributions or the correlations or the results button to compute the statistics, risk measures or range values for uncertain functions. Parameter tab provides the options to run multiple parameterized simulations. Solve action tab allows you to run simulation models. Here on the Analysis tab, you can analyze the results, create reports, and charts. Tools tab enables you to create decision trees, fit distributions, and examine simulation results. Options allow you to set options for simulation, charts, and graphs. Let's explore the Help tab. Here you can display online help, open examples or an online tutorial, access user and reference guides, and check your license status and more. Now the task pane. Model tab allows you to view the model in outline form and optionally edit model elements in place. Let's click on platform tab next. Here you can view or change the platform options such as the number of simulations to run. Next is the engine tab. Here you can review and select simulation options for risk solver engine. Finally, the Output tab allows you to view a log of simulation messages. Now on to our example. You can access this example from Resolver Pro Ribbon, Help, Examples, Monte Carlo Simulation Examples, Yield Management Model 1. The flight has 100 seats and tickets are $200 per seat. Here are the assumptions for overbooking compensations and no-show refund. The uncertain quantity in this model is the number of no-shows. So we should model this with an uncertain variable. Here in cell H22, we are estimating this number and rounding it in cell G22. If we double click on cell H22, we will have this window where we can edit parameters, review the CDF, reverse CDF, statistics, percentiles, change chart options, and so on. Here in cell G31, we calculate the total revenue. In cell G33, we use Simon function to calculate the expected total revenue. How would we arrive at an appropriate distribution for number of no-shows? For an airline, we may have some historical data. This might apply to your business situation as well. Here is the data. If you are not sure what distribution to use, you can use Distribution Wizard to help you. Let's select the data and click on Distributions and select Distribution Wizard. Let's see what this dialog says. Do we have some historical or observed data for this uncertain variable? Let's say yes to this question, since we have historical data and now we need to enter or select the range of cells containing the values. Since I have initially selected the data, it automatically identifies the range of observations. Let's click on Next. Now it is asking if our data is continuous or discrete. Let's choose continuous. I'm going to override the selection for illustration and click on Next. Now we have the choice to fit the data or resample the data. Let's choose to fit an analytic distribution to our historical data and click Next. The Fit Options dialog appears. 
Please note that there is also a fit button on the ribbon menu. Let's choose continuous and uncheck allow shifted distributions. Let's run the independence test and click on fit. Here, Risk Solver computes and displays a ranked list of candidate fitted distributions. You see that it has chosen the Psi log normal distribution and that is the best fit to our historical data. And this distribution has a mean of 10 tickets and a standard deviation is about 6 tickets out of 100 tickets. Yet, if we think about this problem, as we sell more than 100 tickets, well, we expect the number of no-shows to go up proportionally. So we won't use this fitted distribution. Instead, we want to create a distribution that depends on the number of tickets sold, and that is what we have done here. So let's double click on cell H22 again. On the right side, you can see that the mean is 10% of the number of tickets sold and standard deviation is 6% of the number of tickets sold. This provides us with a good model for this business situation. Now let's run one simulation. Here are the results. It is natural to ask how sensitive the total expected revenue is to the changes in the number of tickets sold. To answer this question, Risk Solver has a capability to allow us to ask what if and run a new simulation on each change. To turn on this feature, which is called Interactive Simulation, simply click the light bulb on the ribbon. It will light up and very quickly your first Monte Carlo simulation is complete. 1000 Monte Carlo simulation trials. The default number will be executed each time we change the spreadsheet. Now we can play what if with the simulation model we have. Just before that, let me show you how we can put a marker on the chart to have a reference point. To add a marker, go to the right pane of the uncertain variable or uncertain function dialog. Click on this arrow and choose markers. Click on this plus sign button. We can have a marker at the $19,000 point. Let's apply it. Now, if I manually change the value in cell G27, the chart will get updated and we can see the range of outcomes. Let's change the number of tickets to 110. And here are the results. The results show that the expected revenue in cell G33 went up. So, on average, the balance between overbooking compensation and number of no-shows is working toward our favor. Now, let's change the number of trials from 1000 to 10,000. Go to the Resolver Pro ribbon and enter 10,000. Now, 10,000 Monte Carlo simulation trials will be done each time we change the spreadsheet. Let's try 120 tickets. Well, looks like the expected revenue might have gone up. It is hard to tell if we have gone too far with 120 tickets. Yet, we can find out. Let's try 130 tickets and maybe 140 tickets. Now we are beginning to see that expected revenue is picked up and is going down. Therefore, if we are seeking for insights about what matters in this model, Interactive simulation lets you explore that much the same way as an ordinary what-if spreadsheet. You can ask what-if with uncertainty just like in the spreadsheet and you are getting a new simulation every time you change the spreadsheet where each trial is a recalculation of the spreadsheet. Let me turn off the interactive simulation. Well, we have done interactive simulation enough times to get used to the model, but now we would like to automate that so we don't need to sit there and change the parameters ourselves each time. What we can do is to use parametric simulation techniques. Select number of tickets sold and click on parameters. 
simulation. And to change it from 100 to 150, for example, enter 100 in the lower bound and 150 on the upper bound and click OK. To run a simulation once for each value of the parameter we wish to test, we need to change the number of simulations. Let's click on Task Plane Platform tab. Since we want to test all possible values of the tickets sold between 100 and 150, we can set the number of simulations to 51. With 51 simulation, we are going to run a simulation for 100 tickets, another for 101, all the way to 150 tickets. Each simulation will be 10,000 Monte Carlo trials, since we just changed the number of trials from 1,000 to 10,000. So when we run this, we will be running 510,000 Monte Carlo trials. Let's choose simulate and run once. Here are the results. Now we are looking at a frequency chart for simulation number 51 but we can look at each individual simulation results by easily changing the simulation drop-down selection in this chart and review the frequency chart for simulation number 46, for example, or simulation number 6. The worksheet will initially display values for the last Monte Carlo trial of the last simulation performed but we can display any trial from any simulation by changing the selections in the simulation number and trial number controls on the ribbon. This is how we change things on the spreadsheet. First, with the simulation index, we can go from one simulation to another, and with the trial arrows, we can cycle through individual Monte Carlo trials. Also, we can look at all the simulations together using one of the several reports or charts. Let's explore the charts. For example, if we want to see how the results vary across all 51 simulations, we can use the trend chart. First, select Charts, Multiple Simulations. In this dialog, click this arrow to select all 51 trend. simulations and click OK. Risk Solver then draws the trend chart showing the behavior of our total revenue across all 51 simulations. This blue line is the mean value of revenue, the 75 percentile and 90 percentile. And we can see that as we sell more tickets, overbooking our flight, our revenue goes up, but eventually it peaks out because we are paying too much in overbooking compensations. So we can get some insight right now and we can see that this number of tickets to sell is somewhere around 116 or 117 tickets. Here is the summary of steps to apply the Monte Carlo method. You can start with constructing an ordinary what-if spreadsheet model as you have always done and then you will need to identify uncertain inputs and specify probability distributions.